Hello, my favorite kindergartners. It is Mrs. Sharani from the Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship, bringing you module number one, lesson 17 today. We are just moving through these lessons and we're having so much fun. You did so well with our last lesson, so I'm super excited to see how you guys do today. Today, we're going to work on counting um, sets that have four, five, and six items in them. And we'll also focus a little bit more on the number six today. So it should be fun. As always, we'll start with our fluency game. We'll do a warm up. We'll do our concept development. We'll talk about what we learned and then we'll do our exit ticket for the day. So it should be another really fast math lesson. And if you have something to count with today, I would love for you to get something like that. So maybe some small erasers or little Legos or um, little balls, crayons, literally anything small that you have to count with. Um, we're going to work on arranging them and setting them up in different ways, and it would be fun if you did it along with me. So if you have something like that, that would be cool. Go ahead and pause me and go get it, and then unpause me and come back, and we will get started. Okay, here we go. Module 1, Lesson 17. Like I said, our goal for today is to count four through six objects. So sets of objects with four or five or six in them, and we'll match six objects to the number six. All right, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna practice subitizing again. Usually when we're in the classroom, I flash a card really quick. So today I'm just going to show you the, um, the uh, card that has a dot on it on the computer here. And then when you know how many dots there are, just blurt it out, okay? Okay, here we go. This is called subitizing. Remember, we talked about this last lesson. It's such an important skill to be able to just look at a group of objects and know how many there are without counting. We as adults do that all the time. This is a really important skill for kiddos to learn too. Okay, so I'll show you the card with some dots on it. Quickly tell me how many dots and we'll move on. We'll play this game real fast, okay? All right, here we go, kiddos. Two. Four. One, three, remember this is quick, right? Five, six. So here's a trick about this one. You know how this one had five right here? When we move on and we just see one more, we can just count on five, six, five, one more is six. We can just count down like that. All right, Ooh, let's do some sunrise, sunset counting. You know I love that, right? Okay, so stand up, stand up. And we'll start off kind of crunched. I my top to my water bottle. And let's do sunrise one, all the way to 10 this time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I like to stretch. Okay, now let's go down. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, all the way to the ground, three, two, one. <laughs> Good work. All right, come back, come back, come back. Okay, now, this is a funny application problem. Think of something you could eat five of. What could you eat five of? Some of you might say you could eat five pizzas or five cakes, but think about that. I love pizza and I like cake too, but I don't think I could eat five whole pizzas. I'm not even sure that I could eat five slices of pizza because slices are kind of large too, right? And I'm not really sure that I could eat five whole cakes. I think my belly would hurt a little bit. My taste buds might like it, but I don't know if that's good for my belly. What do you think? I think I could have Definitely, I could eat like five grapes. Grapes are small. I could eat five grapes. Um, if I want to have cookies, I don't know if I could eat five whole cookies. They're kind of big. But my son likes these little cookies that come in the package. I think I could eat five little cookies. Do you think you could eat five little cookies? Like small ones. They're like really small, like the size of a dime. I th think I could eat five of those. Um, I think I could eat like five gummies 
one, we'd be like five olives. I like olives. Could you eat five of? Tell me, send me a message and tell me, okay? All right, next. Okay, so now this is where if you have something small to count with or sort with, get it out. I'm gonna use some cubes and this mat. And this mat is kind of like a five frame, like a double five frame. So there's five dots on top and five dots on the bottom. We're not gonna move these dots around or anything. These are just like our counting mat. So I'm gonna count out four cubes. If you have something to count with with me, count out four of them. And let's put them in a straight row. On, I'm gonna put them on my dots here. You can just put them on a straight row on the ground or table, wherever you're sitting. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. So this is a row. A row goes across. Horizontal is a row. Can we create two rows of two? Okay, so that means I need to have two on top and two on bottom. So I'm gonna move two on bottom here. There we go, two on top, two on bottom. Two and two make four, that's our double fact. Two and two make four. Okay, let's move on to this one now. Now let's count out five cubes and you count out five, two, ready? One, two, three, let's put them on a row still, just like I am, four and five. Okay, I counted out my five cubes. We have five straight across here in a row. Now, can we create some columns? Columns go up and down. Let's see. I move one here and then one here. Oh, I could have two columns with one left over. I could do that. I could also put four in one row and one in the next. That would give me five too, right? Let's do the next one. Here we go, number six. We have yet to work with the number six. All right, now let's do this. Let's count out six cubes on our map. One, two, three, four, five. I have one left over. Six. We have six. Six cubes. Five in one row, one in the other. That gives me six. Can we create rows of three? Let's see. I have two rows of three now. Three and three make six. That's a double fact. Um, can we put all of our cubes in the same row? No, we tried that before, right? We couldn't put them all in there. We had one extra cube and we couldn't put them all in there. But we can do three and three, or we could do five on one row and one in the next to make six. You got it. All right, let me show you your exit ticket for the day now, okay? And if you wanna keep working with your, uh, whatever you have to count with, that would be fun to do this too. Okay, so look at this rectangle. How many shapes are inside the rectangle? And count. How many shapes are inside this one? Count. How many shapes inside this one? Count and choose. And then down here, you're gonna fill in the missing number. So I'll read it. Zero, one, what's missing there? It's kind of like beep the number. Remember we played that game once? Then look here. Beep, five, six. A number comes before five. Choose it. And that's that. There you go. I can't wait to see how you guys do with that today. If you were working with um, some counting manipulatives and you want to send a picture to your teacher, to me, that would be so cool. I'd love to see how you guys were counting and um, putting things into rows and columns. Great job counting sets of objects, four, five, and we even did six today. We are getting better and better at math. We're becoming great mathematicians. Amazing job today, guys. I will see you next time for lesson 18. Adios.